Hello and welcome to Scripture of the Day Bonfire Edition. And I've got breaking news, everybody. It's another beautiful day in Huntington Beach. That's right. Here we are at City Beach, Tower 15, right across from the Hyatt Regency. And hey, kids, let me ask you a question. Are we having fun? Yeah! <laughs> We're roasting some mellows, and I'm here with my brother Josh Draper from my... Uh, fellowship group and we like to do bonfires together down here at the beach the guys when we get together to encourage one another and you can see that Josh when you hang out with him he brings some of the nicest beach chairs seriously this thing's like a recliner once you get in you don't ever want to leave we have end tables down here at the beach everybody that's the level that that my fellowship group rolls with shout out to brother Mike Bardeen he throws the grill, the grill down. He roasts some dogs. They're like the best hot dogs you will ever have. They have this grit to them, unlike anything else I've tasted. I think it's called sand, maybe. But they're just delicious hot dogs. And so welcome to a bonfire. Now, we're so blessed to live here uh, by the beach like this. Not, not everybody all over the world gets to experience something awesome like this. Uh, when we went to Texas earlier this year, my wife Krista was speaking there uh, to the women at my dad's church there in San Antonio and she gave an illustration about a bonfire and people were like, what is that? A bonfire? What, 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 what are we doing? A bonfire. So it's awesome that we get to be here and enjoy God's creation. Today's chapter is 2 Timothy 1, and Paul's writing to his true son in the faith, Timothy. And he says that he needs to fan into flame the gift of God that is within him. And I was looking up that, that Greek word there, fan into flame, and it said, revive the fire. And so that's why we're here at a bonfire. And so you can see that the fire we got going right here, if you can get a glimpse of it here, it is just embers, just barely burning at this point. So my friend, Josh, he's gonna stoke this fire because that's what Paul is telling Timothy to do. Like you've got a gift, it was through the laying on of hands, it's a gift of the Spirit, and the Spirit, what he's given us is power, love, self-control. So we're gonna start fanning this flame, we're gonna start stoking this fire, and we're excited to announce to you our scripture of the day, bonfire giveaway. That's right. My friend Josh, myself, maybe we can get Mike Bardeen down here uh, grilling some dogs. Maybe we'll get Ryan Pierce over here playing a little worship. We want to give away a bonfire for you and your family, maybe some friends from the church to come down here and enjoy God's creation together and stoke the fires of our heart into a flame for Jesus Christ. Are you with me, scripture of the day? Can I get an amen from anybody right now? So here's what I need you to do. If you want to win a bonfire experience at Tower 15, uh, right by the Hyatt Regency at City Beach, if you want to be here with us, sitting in these chairs with the end tables and the cup holders, if you want that experience, leave a comment on this video, 2 Timothy 1, the Revive the Fire giveaway. Leave a comment and share with us a passage of scripture that stokes the fire of your heart for Jesus Christ. A passage of scripture that every time you hear it, you read it, somebody brings it up, you're like, mm-hmm, yes, give me some more of that. So we're stoking the fire here at the beach and we're doing a giveaway for a verse that stokes the fire in your heart. We need to fan it into flame, as Paul says in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. So I want to strongly encourage you to read 2 Timothy with me this week. And we got to get in the mindset that when the Apostle Paul is writing to his disciple that he loves he knows this might be the last words that he writes to him, okay? And the word that he leaves him with is, hey, Timothy, fan it into flame. Revive the fire. Stir thyself is another way that it's been translated. So Timothy comes from a history of faith. It talks about his grandmother and his mother in this chapter. 
Clearly, Paul has trained him up and discipled him. He's followed Paul, seen Paul's example, been taught by Paul in the presence of many witnesses, been taught by Paul personally. So Timothy's learned a lot, but Paul knows that legacy, that influence is gonna go away. And Timothy, he's gonna have to stir up himself, the power of the Spirit within him. He's gonna have to get that revived going within his own soul. So this is something all of us are gonna have to do. Hey, if you've been blessed in your life and you grew up in a Christian family, hey, that fire, if you don't stoke that fire, if you don't stir it up, that fire's gonna die out. Now you can see my friend, Josh, he did a great job stoking this fire. I mean, it's burning my face off right now. I mean, he really got this thing going. Hey, I gotta ask you a personal question. Is your heart really on fire right now for Jesus Christ? Is that really where you at? Or do you need to fan it into flame? All of us are gonna have these times that we need to get stirred up and revived. Maybe you've been discipled by somebody. Like I got discipled that uh, my whole life really by my dad was an example to me, teaching me. And then at Compass Bible Church, Pastor Mike Fabares, Pastor Pete Lazushikov, they invested in me, but nobody's there holding my hand every single day. No, I've got to, me and the Lord, I've got to have revival right here in my heart. And so that's a strong word that Paul gives to Timothy. Like, hey, I'm not going to be there. Grandma and mom aren't going to be there. It's going to be you, Timothy, you as the pastor in Ephesus. It's going to get real and you got to stir thyself. You got to fan it into flame. So that's our, our focus here in this first chapter. As Paul recounts how he's a prisoner and he's suffering and what Jesus did when through his death, he brought life, he brought immortality through the gospel. And he's like, hey, Timothy, it's not time for you to get ashamed of me, the prisoner of the gospel, or of Jesus who gives us immortality through the gospel. It's not time for you to back down, Timothy, after I'm gone. It's time for you to stir up and stoke the fire of your heart. So let's all take that that word of encouragement that Paul gives to Timothy. Let's take that to heart here today. Are you, is your fire burning out or is it fanned into a mighty flame with passion and love for Jesus Christ? Now, as Paul is writing to Timothy to stir himself up, he cannot help but throw in a little bit of a pep talk and a strong encouragement he says in verse 8 therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony about our lord nor of me his prisoner but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of god so he's trying to remind timothy hey you've got power love you've got self-control the spirit is within you and so hey Hey, remember me, the prisoner of the Lord? And clearly these two men had a strong, affectionate bond. Hey, remember what our Lord Jesus Christ did. And he goes on to say in verse nine, who saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, and which now has been manifested through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus. And listen to this description right here of the gospel. Who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. He's like, hey, what are the things that really reach your affections? What are the things that remind you of your core motivation? Hey, is it it me, Timothy, just thinking about me here in prison? Can that stir you up? Is it thinking about what Jesus did when he defeated death, when he died on that cross and he abolished death and he brought life, he brought immortality, eternal life? Is it the gospel of Jesus? Is it a personal relationship? What's something that's really mattered to you? That's that's how he's writing to him. He's using himself in prison. He's using Jesus dying. Timothy, can you remember? Are you ashamed of it? Or is this what really stokes the fire of your heart? I remember one time when I was in college, you know, I had this great teacher. I talk about him a lot because he really influenced me and inspired me. His name was Dr. Simons, and he was a man who was a pastor, and then he was a writing teacher. And I remember one day, maybe you've heard me share this story before, but it just sticks out to me because I was sleeping through a class that I had with Dr. Simons, a poetry class, 8 o'clock class, and I was slacking off. I wasn't really going for it. I didn't want to be there. 
and he left class, went and found a phone, called me, for some reason I answered my dorm room phone, and he said, Blakey, stir thyself. And the reason I love that story is because it, it reminds me that Dr. Simons, he thought I should do something with my life. He thought, I, he thought I had a gift that maybe I could use to glorify God. Who's had a relationship with you like that? where they've encouraged you, they've come alongside of you, they've invested in you. Is thinking about that relationship getting you fired up a little bit right now? What about Jesus and all that he's done when he laid down his life for you, when he rose from the dead for you? All the promises, how he's built up our church and we've seen him save people together. We see him right now even raising up a team of laborers here in North Orange County and South LA County to make an eternal impact. Does that fire you up? See, he's, Paul's doing something. He, he's saying you got to fan it into flame, and then he's starting to bring forth things. Hey, is it our relationship, Timothy? Is it what Jesus has done for you, Timothy? What's going to get you going? Because you, you need to guard the good deposit entrusted to you. All of us, at some point in our life, the baton gets handed to us, and now it's our turn to take it up and to run with it. That's what this book is about, the passing of the baton from Paul to Timothy. I hope it inspires you. I hope your heart gets stoked. Share a verse down below that really encourages you and gets you going. I got one that I want to share down below. It's Psalm 42, where the guy's feeling a little depressed, and he says, Why are you downcast, O my soul? Hope in God, for I will yet praise him. My help, my countenance, and that, that lifts him up. Hey, why am, I, why am I feeling a certain way? I need to get stirred up. I need to get revived. And he starts talking to himself. Why are you downcast, oh my soul? I'm going to praise God against Psalm 42. There's an example. Throw a verse down there. Let's get fired up today. Let's learn about, hey, what does it mean to fan into flame the gift of God within us? Let's, let's do that, just like this fire here. And we'll see you for more on Scripture of the day.